Hello and welcome to four ways to do a multi-column lookup in Microsoft Excel. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Now, before I get into the Excel formulas, I do wanna zoom out and talk about our objective. Now, when we're doing a traditional lookup, there is one lookup value that we use to do the lookup. And VLOOKUP works great for that. But what we're trying to do now is do a lookup that is based on multiple columns. That means two or more conditions. So we're gonna talk about four different alternatives for doing this, and the best one is option four. Okay, so in Excel, we basically wanna do a lookup based on class and account, right? Class and account. So these are the two different conditions that we wanna to match to. There's not a single lookup column, there are multiple lookup columns. And the thing we wanna return is the amount. So in this video, we're gonna look at four different options for this. The one you choose really depends on sort of what you're trying to accomplish and what version of Excel you have. So let's just go through all four of them. Option one is some ifs. Now, some ifs will be a great choice if the value you are trying to return is a number. Okay, because the sum is function returns a sum of all matching rows. It returns a number. So when the thing you're trying to return is a number, this is a great option. And basically what it looks like is this, equals sum ifs. Okay, and then we want to define the arguments. The first argument is the sum range. What's that? It's the column of numbers to add. So we want to add up all of these values, comma, and then the remaining arguments come in pairs. Criteria range, criteria value. Criteria range, criteria value. You can do two, we're gonna do two here. You can do three, four, five, you can do 100 plus if you want. In this case, we're gonna say we only wanna include those rows where the class comma is equal to our class comma and where the account comma is equal to our account. So before we hit enter, let's review. I'm asking the sum ifs function with the trailing s to add up the amount column, but to only include certain rows. Only include the rows where the class is equal to our class and the account is equal to our account. And those are the five function arguments in this formula. Then I hit enter. And then I can go ahead and fill this down and let's see if it works. New construction design is 3152, that looks good. New construction labor is 58492, that looks good. New construction materials is 64, and it looks like we got it. Now the thing to note about the sum if function is that it does not stop at the first match. It sums all matching rows. So for example, if I had multiple rows with new construction other income, it will add them all. So here's new construction other income 299, 299, and let's add another one. New construction other income 425, and then we see the total changes here. So that's the summary of the sum is function. A, it handles multiple conditions, B, it returns a number, and C, it returns the sum of all matching rows, okay? So if that's what you're trying to do, awesome. Now let's go to the next one. Option number two is VLOOKUP, okay? But it needs a helper function. So let's go ahead and break this down. Here I'm trying to return the state. The state is a text value. So can we use some ifs? Well, no. Why? Because the sum ifs returns a sum. It returns a number. The thing we're trying to return here is a text, so sum ifs isn't going to work. But can we use VLOOKUP? Well, not really, because VLOOKUP is designed with a single lookup value. It doesn't have multiple arguments for multiple conditions like sum ifs does. So, can we use VLOOKUP? Yes, but only when we use a sum ifs function and only under certain situations. So the assumptions where this will work is if there is a numeric ID column, and if there's not one, you can create it, and if there are no duplicate names, like no duplicate uh, combinations of names. So when that is true, we can use VLOOKUP with a sum ifs helper. So let's break this down. Equal sum ifs. I want to add up this column of numbers comma, I only want to include those rows where the last name column is equal to our last name, and where the first name column, comma, is equal to our first name. Close the function and enter. Now that's exactly what we did here, okay? Now what we have is the unique EEID. So, hmm, that's not what we want. What we want is the state. Is there some way to get VLOOKUP 
to look up this value in this list and return the state. Yeah, sure is. We can just ask the VLOOKUP function, and the first argument of VLOOKUP is the lookup value, and that's what the SUMIFS function figures out. It's the lookup value. It's the EEID. And then you'd finish the VLOOKUP as normal. So go find the EEID, comma, in this range, comma, return the value from the one, two, three, fourth column, and zero for exact match. Close function before we hit enter, let's review. I'm asking the VLOOKUP function to go find the ID returned by the SUMIFS function. The SUMIFS function is gonna figure it out based on matching last and first name columns. Then go find that in table two, return the value from the one, two, three, fourth column, that's the state column, zero for exact match, let's see if it works, and Smith, Brandon, NC, looks like it works. Let's go ahead and fill this down. We have Smith, Deborah, CT, that looks like it works. And Evans, John, TX is looking good too, okay? So that is option number two. Let's go to option number three, XLOOKUP. So if your version of Excel supports XLOOKUP, you can use this technique. How do you know if your version of Excel supports XLOOKUP? Just type equals XL, and if it shows up, then you got it. Now here we have region and product, region and product, and we want to return amount and status. So with XLOOKUP, we want to have the lookup value. And one way to approach this is to simply concatenate or join the lookup value and then to join the lookup arrays. So we would do find this and then the ampersand, which is the concatenation operator, and this. So join those together and then look for them where? Well, look for them in this concatenated region and product ID uh, value. And then what do we want to return? We want to return both of these columns. So that's a way to do that. And then we hit enter and we've got it. Let's fill it down. And then let's take a check here. NB796, NB796, SC622, SC622, and EB568, EB568. Okay. Cool? All right, now, if your version of Excel supports filter, then you can use this technique. The fast way to find out if your version of Excel supports filter is to type equals FIL and see if filter shows up. If you do, awesome, you've got it. And otherwise, we'll use some of the previous techniques that we've discussed. So, if you have filter, what we can basically do is say, we wanna return values from which columns? So we could pick you know, a single column. In this case, we're gonna pick all columns and then comma, and then we have to define an expression that defines which rows to include. And there are many ways to do this. One way is to basically say, does the region column, and then we're gonna use the concatenation operator. That's a fancy term, it's just the ampersand. It just means join these text values. So we're gonna join the region and product columns together, and then say, does that equal and then we're gonna say we're gonna join our region and product values together. Okay, so before I hit enter, let's review. I'm asking the filter function to return all the columns from table four. Which rows? Only those rows where the concatenated or joined region and product ID values are equal to the concatenated or joined region and product ID values that we've defined. Hit enter and we've got it. And you can see that this returns all matching rows. So if there happen to be multiple transactions, like these are sales transactions, there are multiple transactions that meet the criteria, all of them are included. So those are four ways to do multi-column lookups in Microsoft Excel. All right, up next, seven time hacks. This video is a collection of seven amazing time hacks that anyone can use to save time. This video is a production of Excel University.